For this lesson, we had three main goals. First, we wanted to incorporate the nature of science throughout the lesson by supporting how students are scientists. Second, we wanted to reinforce what they previously learned in their unit on physical properties through hands-on activities. We also wanted to cover the matter SOLs related to physical properties. Our third goal was to ask guiding questions throughout the lesson to encourage critical thinking about the activity. We began our learning cycle lesson with an engagement activity. So we have three objects, a start, a glass of water, and a basketball. So we're going to practice your observation of physical properties with these three objects. So for example, I see that the basketball is orange. So turn and talk with your group mates and figure out other physical properties that you observe for these three things. After we passed around the objects, students shared with the class their observations. Hey, what about with the scarf? What kind of observations did you make with the scarf? Yes. It's colorful. It is colorful. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of sense did you use to do that? After the engagement activity, we explained how the students would be scientists today. Okay, so now is the time when you all get to be real scientists. So, yes, Kingston's going to pass out a bucket. Yes, We're not going to wear coats. We will wear safety goggles. We don't want anything going into our eyes. Because when real scientists work, and if they're working with dangerous materials, they wear safety goggles. Too, to help protect their eyes so, they get so while they're passing out the packets, you can listen to me for a minute. So what we're going to do is we have five mystery substances. You won't know what they are, we're not going to tell you what they are, and you're going to need scientists to try to observe them and figure out what they are. So first we want you to, or we're only actually going to use four of our five senses today. We're only going to use our eyes to observe the sight. We're going to use our fingers to touch the, to touch the material to see what it feels like. We're going to use Hannah continued to explain the activity and described how to make observations of physical properties using the four senses. Once we explained the expectations, we passed out materials and goggles and students got to work. During the explore phase, students were given five mystery substances. Students were asked to use their four senses to make observations about the physical properties and predictions about what the substances might be. Students shared their observations and then made predictions about what each substance could be. After sharing their predictions, we revealed the identities of the five substances. So, substance number one is salt. Yes! 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 yes. Well, actually, well, y'all get that, so good job. Salt. Substance number two is sugar. Oh, oh my god! Yes! Yeah. 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 That was tricky. Overall, we felt our lesson went well. Students were engaged and we covered all the necessary content. After analyzing our lesson, we came up with some things we could work on for future teaching. Our lesson went over 20 minutes because during the explore phase, we had a hard time cutting off experimentation time since students were so engaged. We learned the importance of staying within our time limits. We also realized that the lesson could have been structured differently to be more efficient. Students had trouble rotating the materials amongst themselves, and we learned that we should have explicitly made a rotation method. The last problem we had was that we accidentally brought five total cups for the activity instead of five cups for each table. We were able to think on our feet and borrow cups from the cooperating teacher, but the process taught us the importance of double and triple checking our materials before the lesson. After completing and analyzing our learning cycle lesson, we were able to form some additional goals for our science circus. First, we wanted to make sure that we stayed within the one hour time limit. 
Second, we wanted to make sure that the activities and student cards for each station were grade appropriate and easy for students to understand. Third, we wanted to incorporate the nature of science throughout the lesson, not just at the beginning and the end. Lastly, we wanted to successfully manage the class to ensure activities were completed efficiently and effectively. With the multiple stations occurring at once and rotating every seven minutes, we wanted to make sure that we were able to manage the classroom. We first got students thinking about the phases of matter by showing them a balloon, a cup of water, and a rock, and asking them to describe the objects. We then asked what they already knew about matter. What else do we know about matter? Maya? Matter is something like a solid. After taking some more volunteer answers, we explained to students how they would be rotating through the circuit stations. We tried to explicitly state the directions so students would understand how to efficiently move from one station to the next. I want to explain what we're doing a little bit today. Like I told you before, we have a science circus. So we have five different activities for you guys to do. Um, you'll have seven minutes at each station, so I'll be timing them. And I'll ring the bell just like we do when we do the daily five for reading. I'll ring the bell when it's time to change. And when I ring the bell, I want you guys to put everything back in the middle, and then you'll be moving back around the stations in numerical order. During the explore phase of our lesson, students moved through five stations where they completed matter activities. At the first station, students completed an experiment using a bottle, water, vinegar, and a balloon to see matter changing phases. While students were very engaged in the activity, the process required teacher assistance because students did not have the fine motor skills to place the balloon on the water bottle. At the second station, students completed a marble race. Each student was given a different liquid. Marbles were dropped in at the same time to see which marble hit the bottom of the cup first. Before starting, students made observations about the liquids and predictions about which liquid would allow the marble to travel fastest. At this station, students learned that liquids can have different characteristics. It was difficult to get students to make predictions and record data because they were so engaged with the materials. At the third station, students completed a card sort about the phases of matter where they had to categorize various pictures as either solids, liquids, or gases. While this station did not use authentic materials, it was still hands-on and was necessary for us to have a station that did not require constant teacher supervision. At the fourth station, students measured the mass of five different solids. Before measuring, we asked students to rank the objects from most mass to least mass. Students were surprised to know that the apple had a larger mass than the rock. While it was a good lesson on maths, it was difficult to tie explicitly back to the phases of matter. At the fifth station, students used their senses to make observations about a mystery substance. Depending on how the substance was touched, it took on characteristics of a solid or a liquid. Students were able to practice making observations about the different characteristics of solids and liquids. After students had gone through all five stations, we gathered them back to the carpet to discuss their observations and what they had learned. With the liquid station, that even though if all liquids, not all of them, that um, if you drop something in all of, in all of them, not all of them can go as fast as you think they would. Yeah. So some of the liquids were different from the other liquids, right? But they were all still liquids, so they had some similarities between them. But some of them might have been a little bit thicker than others, so that might be why a marble went slower through that substance. There's a fancy word for that called viscosity, and it just means that the liquid is thicker than other liquids. So it goes, that's why the marble goes slower through it. So what were some of the things you noticed about It dries really quick. It can be made out of glue. So did you think it was a solid or did you think it was a liquid? Solid. Liquid. Solid. Liquid. Solid. Liquid. Solid. Liquid. Solid. Liquid. Raise your hand if you thought it was a solid. Raise your hand if you thought it was a liquid. So it kind of had properties of both, right? Yeah. When you poked it hard, it kind of was hard like a solid. But then when you moved it in your bag, it was kind of liquidy. Overall, the science circus went well. We were able to accomplish a lot of our goals and make improvements from the learning cycle lesson. Students were actively engaged in inquiry by asking questions about the activities. Learning was student-centered as students were given the chance to explore and solve problems at each station. We also successfully completed the lesson in the allotted time. After completing the science circus lesson, we were able to create a list of goals that will guide us in our future teaching. When completing an activity like this in the future, we would like to make our transitions smoother. Before rotating stations, we would call student attention to 
the front of the classroom and only rotate once the stations were cleaned up and all eyes were on the teacher. A few misconceptions arose among both teacher and students. In the future lessons, we would like to clear up our own misconceptions before the lesson, as well as clear up any student misconceptions that we hear. Lastly, in our future science lessons, we want to recognize students as scientists in their daily lives, not only during science class. Incorporating the nature of science into everything they do will be beneficial to student learning in both science and other subjects. Yeah. Can we go play at Mises now? <laughs> <laughs>